After two days of competition at the UCI Track Cycling World Championships, Australia heads the medal tally with two gold, two silver and two bronze. Kate Bates is with me here for this edition of Bike Shorts. But Kate, despite the Aussie success, I think the feel-good story of the meet so far was from the Irish rider, a one-man team, his name, Martin Irvine. What do you think? Oh, God, I think so. I've still got a smile on my face from the smile on his face mm. after he won the scratch race. Already when he got a silver in the individual pursuit, we were saying 116 years, 116 mm. years since an Irish male has stood on a podium at a World Championships. An hour later, he had a gold medal, two medals in one night. I mean, phenomenal. And social media is a light with his name, you know, strong like ox is the hashtag they're using. They're very fond of him and, and I think we are in here too. Very well, impressive. The, fa the fact is, Kate, that uh, Ireland doesn't have a velodrome. Uh, people like Irvine have to train, I guess, in Great Britain and other nations, but this guy, uh, he's a road champion as well, or a success story at least, but to win two medals, gold and silver in one hour, uh, for a nation that hasn't got a velodrome, that is even more remarkable. It is. It's very impressive. He is actually coached by Andy Sparks, who's Sarah Hammer's uh, partner. They trained down in Majorca in a small training group. He's been coming for a few years. There's been talk of the potential that he has, the work ethic that he has. He had an interview post-race and he said, I just did what I do. And that's race hard. And, and we saw that with a lap to go. He just really put his head down and, and left it all out there. And I think success stories like that really light up the championships. I can't wait to see him in action in the Omnium. Michael Hepburn uh, got himself another gold medal, uh, the second uh, in two days, and he won the individual pursuit and stepping into the role left behind by the likes of Jack Bobridge and Rowan Dennis successfully. Well, brilliant ride from Michael Hepburn. His fifth world title, his second at these championships. We saw a bit of a hesitant smile on his face. I think this is the last time we'll actually see him on the boards. He'll go to the road now. Mm. A disappointment for the Australian track team because he's really come into his own and he's only 21 years of age, Tomo, and yeah. five senior world titles at 21. He's a big talent. If he can take that to the road, then I think the future looks bright in the road as well. And the Aussie endurance team, uh, bridesmaids again behind the Brits, disappointing? Or expected? Possibly expected. I think to be within two seconds is a lot better than they have been in the past. They've been four to five seconds off uh, in the past. We also saw Ashley Ann Kudinoff ride in the heat, Amy Kill ride in the final. So at least Australia has a depth. So there's mm. potential in years to come to step up. I always want to see them, you know, take that, that step up onto the podium, get a little bit more confidence. But Great Britain are like a steam train and they know they can win. That's the thing, Tomo. They get on the track with confidence and you have to wonder if maybe the Australians get on the track and think we're here for silver because with that mentality it's very hard to win and until that turns around I think we're going to continue to look at minor medals. Yeah, very interesting comments there, Kate. Uh, looking ahead to day three later on today, uh, Glenn O'Shea steps up. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in the Omnium. Yeah, well, he's world champion already at these championships in the team's pursuit. He's reigning world champion in the Omnium. He'll have a target on his back, but with some of the events timed, I mean, it doesn't matter whether everybody's watching you, you have to go out there and perform. The flying lap will be interesting because Glenn is normally very strong in this event. If he again comes out and produces in that first event, uh, I think he'll give it a red-hot crack. We'll also see Carly McCulloch and Stephanie Morton in the women's sprint. Just your take on the way uh, Carly's uh, performing and uh, the way her career is progressing. She missed out on the, on a medal in the kilo, or the sorry, the uh, women's time trial. Um, is she in a good place right now or is it a little bit difficult for her? I think today would have been very disappointing to end up sixth in the 500 metre time trial. It was a real opportunity for Carly to sort of step into the boots that Anna has filled for so long. She's at quite an important part of her career. Anna's on the back burner. Just for the moment, she'll be back. But Stephanie Morton, she's not knocking on the door. She's walking through it. Carly needs to maintain her position in front of Stephanie. The sprint tomorrow will be interesting. Stephanie showed us at national championships that... She's ready to step up and Carly really needs to do the same. She really needs to show the experience and show the number of years she's been competing at these championships and come out and get a result. I, I think she needs to do that. Well, Kate, you're a 2007 world champion, but more recently you climbed one of the highest <laughs> mountains in the world. How does that compare? Well, you know, I Mount think Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> in Africa. I think it's the athlete mentality, Tomo. You know, you always want a little bit more and... 
what better example than Martin Irvine in the scratch race tonight? He already had a silver in the individual pursuit, but he wanted more. And in that last lap, uh, we saw that. I think as an ex-athlete, you know, different mentality doesn't change. It sure doesn't. Kate Bates, uh, thanks for joining us on Bike Shorts. Live coverage of day three from three o'clock. That's Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow morning.